Okay, so let's continue with modeling this model now. So this one is a bit different from the other ones as even though it's a turned object, we are not going to start with a line and try to lathe the actual geometry. Instead, if we take a look at the edges over here between these um, ridges, we're going to see that they are a bit jagged which means that we have a hard line dividing all of these places. So in order to get this, this is basically going to make our job easier because all we have to do is just do some nice um, poly modeling and we can attain a result like this. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and choose a box. Now, since I can see three of these indentions on this side, since and I know that these guys are flat. I'm guessing that there's one more on the sides and then it's mirroring on the other side, which means that we either have six or eight of these indentions. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to guess that it's eight, but even though if it's six, it's going to be the same exact uh, process. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and not a box, my bad, a cylinder. So I'm going to choose eight sides. So an eight sided cylinder, click in the middle and pull towards the edges until you get the di diameter of your model. So now rotate it 90 degrees and simply position it into place. All right, let's put it around right here. Go back to the modifier tab make sure you have one height segment for easier let's see with eight looks like this with six well actually i think it's six with as it is with six we're going to only see three all right we'll go with six so right click convert to an edible poly or you can just drop on edit poly doesn't matter so convert to an edible poly I'm going to drag it upwards till about here so we get the, ex uh, the exact height of the leg and now all we have to do is just select all the polygons. Now inset this for some amount and make sure that you are not into inset group but you are insetting by a polygon. So inset until you get something like this. So 5 centimeters in my case should work fine click and if you take a look at the model here this is what we got so far all right now the next thing we want to do is we want to get these indentions and the easiest way would be to simply bevel this so bevel it for let's say minus two or minus even four nope nope this is too much minus three Not three, minus three. Okay. For some reason, it doesn't want to work now. Minus three. All right. And with minus one, it just might be too little. So minus three again. Mm, this should work. All right. So we've, so we have something like this now. Before we continue on. I want to go ahead and select the top portion and the lower portion like right here and delete them both this is because i want to continue with modeling by free uh freehand upwards so i'm just gonna hold down shift click once and then one more time upwards the reason for this line is because i wanted to constrain the geometry flow from that we're gonna get from these uh, pieces over here. You'll see what I mean in a second. Just do the same thing over here one more time. Just once and this. All right. So now, if I add a turbo smooth, we're gonna get something like this. And <laughs> if I uh, look at it like this, it doesn't look right for this 
uh, part, but for some reason it kind of resembles this one. But we'll get to this one later. So for now, because I've gotten this result, like uh, here, and if I move this on the side, you'll see that it really doesn't resemble too much like what we have here. We're going to have to do some quick modeling to make sure we retain this form. So first thing we have to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in a one edge over here. This should help hold this form. I'm going to go ahead, do the same thing on the bottom. And now if I uh, put on the turbo smooth, we're going to get a different result, but still it's not going to be precisely what we want. We don't have any of the definition that these edges have. So in order to get the definition, we need to add a few more edges, one on the top, one on the bottom, and one even on this side, depending on how sharp you want this upper portion to be. So let's see how this looks like this. So we don't have too much of a definition on the top part. So go ahead, drop in one more edge over here. And now when you take a look at this, it looks like this. So we have a sharp edge, but this transition over here is not like the one we have in our model. So I'm going to go ahead here and select the last uh, edge we inputted it and hold down control and backspace. This is going to delete our edge. But the, uh, the difference is that when you hold down control and backspace, it doesn't leave any vertices uh, back in where that edge was. So in order to get that transition, I'm going to select this here uh, edge, hold on Alt R to get a ring selection. And from here, I'm just going to select one connect. With this one connect, I'm going to select these upper vertices go down hold on control select these guys and now with the scale tool i'm simply going to scale them on the y axis so we get something like something like this so in this case we have a transition happening in the form so when i put on the turbo smooth now we are getting this result over here so Depending on how sharp you want this transition to be, you can either choose to put in the, that extra line I told you guys about here, or you can simply go without it, but it all kind of depends on how sharp you want this to be. All right. And now I can go ahead and do this same thing to uh, the rest of the elements, but Instead, I'm going to do what I showed you in the previous videos, and I'm going to use the array to help me clone this faster. So hold on and select everything. Let's do it from the top. Select all of them. Make sure your pivot is centered because, all right, center to object. select all the polygons and now all we have to do is jump over to where is it all right to array and from here all we have to do is go ahead and make sure it's uh, 360 on the z axis i think with six yep Let's run it five, no, six. So six on 360 degrees on the Z axis. Make sure it's a copy. Well, but before I do that, I want to turn off my turbo smooth. I don't want it to be with turbo smooth at all of them. So again, array, rotate 360, six, preview, okay. Attach all of these together. And this is the what I was talking about when you're doing your array. If 
you leave it on an instance, all of these are copied from the one we have. So uh, this is a good chance for me to show you another thing as to when you're making instances. If you already make an instance and there is, uh, for some reason, you cannot go back, there is a way that you can distinguish instances from regular geometry. And if you want to get all of these together in a single object, you have to make them to be unique. And the way you distinguish uh, instance from a regular uh, geometry is by their name over here. If you take a look at this one, in, uh, right away, I know this is an instance. The main difference is take a look at the boldness of the letters here. If I click on the original one, it's nice and uh, sharp um, letters and all of the instances are bolded so if you want to make the instances um, not be instances but instead be unique all you have to do is click this here button make unique and right away you're going to notice that the boldness is going to be uh, away from there so no, there's no more boldness all of these are now unique models and i can there we go I can now attach them together with the vertex selection, control A, select all the vertices, weld with a small value, make sure you don't set up something too high, click OK. And now if I turn it smooth, I get the correct shape for this. And it's starting to get the initial shape we need for our uh, leg. Because we didn't use the lathe modifier to get this shape, now we're gonna just have to go ahead and manually select the border. And now let me just put it into place so I can better trace it with the help of simple modifying something like this and just draw it out where it's like this one more down to here another one to here so simple box modeling techniques for this i'm going to press alt x so i can see what's what in the background all right do the same thing here once hold down shift like upwards hold down shift again one more here here and here all right with this now i can just put it again on the side so i can see it better as a reference turbo smooth is going to give me some of the form i just have to define exactly where i want the sharpness to be so I'm going to select this edge because I can see that we have some beveled edges here. Go ahead, chamfer this. Something like this should work. It's going to give it some nice round smoothness, like we can see here. Then we have a more pronounced edge over here. So one chamfer here. I'm going to put it in two so I can get a sharper edge. And one more chamfer here. And let's see, Turbo Smooth says, well, not bad. Now, if I want to get in and get this closer to resemble, I can just continue adding the edges and the edge loops to help me constrain this form. Same with the bottom. So just select what you need, chamfer with the amount that you want the sharpness to be. For example, I can see that uh, this is supposed to resemble this portion. This part over here uh, kind of looks like it has a small bulge. So I can go ahead, insert a poly over here, or just a simple edge, get it to something like this. It's going to help the transition. And in the middle, we have something like a ridge. In order to get that ridge, I'm just going to select this inner edge. I'm going to chamfer it first. 
and then the one in the middle I'm going to extend it outwards and chamfer it one more time this time though with one so this is going to give us that bulge depending on how thick we want it we can just move it upwards and downwards and once it's smooth we're going to get that ridge happening with two iteration of turbo smooth you're going to get this form happening here so now for the rest i can just put in uh, one of the top portions here we we've seen how to do this in the previous videos if you haven't watched those you can feel, uh, feel free and go ahead and with this I think we got pretty close to this model here so again I'm just gonna put in a gray material put on a dark color and there we go with this we get this kind of a result for me, in my layers, I have it as a modular set, here it is, so I can just continue and put it on the top. In this case, I want to make sure if it's the same width. Yep, it is. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and align both of these. So we align, don't take the Z, check both of them center with center okay and with this we get something like this happening all right with the edit poly on top and there we go with this we have achieved this result so let's continue and in the next video see how we can do the rest of the uh, turned legs and we can continue from there